Okay, just a really quick example of how you might use the sample uh, sample uh, question generators here. Uh, I'm going to do one where we're going to be looking at this one where um, it has two variables in the question. So this is just a sample question about uh, the volume of the cylinder. I'm going to copy that as if I'm going to put it into my activity. So I'm actually going to start a new activity here. And uh, so I'll just call this my activity. You might have one already going already. And I'm going to create that guy. And uh, I can just actually just paste that in. So that's the slide for the two variable one. If I hit the preview, you can see it comes up with a question with uh, the height and the radius. And if I do that again, it's a different height and different radius. Um, and so I'm going to change this. Uh, so it's a question where students are given a fraction and they are asked to um, find a e equivalent fraction to that. So um, if I go into the CL code here, uh, I'm going to have my two variables. So the two variables I'm going to use that for the numerator and denominator of the fraction. So uh, I'm going to have the... Uh, top of the fraction be a number between 2 and 9 and the bottom between 2 and 9 as well and so now let's uh, actually create the question we want them to determine the uh, equivalent uh, fraction to a given fraction and so we're going to get rid of this volume question and notice that I spelled determine incorrectly so we can fix that right away uh, determine an equivalent fraction 2 and then now we've got to create our fraction out of the numerator that's going to come from the A and the denominator that's going to come from the B and we're going to use a little bit of latex code to do that so we have to open with the tick mark that's the value that's uh, on the tilde on the top left of your keyboard a couple of backslashes there and frac for the code for fraction we're going to open up a curly brackets to represent the numerator that is not curly brackets let's do that with the proper curly brackets and now we're going to put the variable in the variable goes in with the dollar sign another set of curly brackets and then in, we want the a and then we're going to close the bracket that's the numerator in that that's first set of curly brackets in the second one we're going to open that up we're going to put the dollar sign curly brackets and the b and then we're going to close that off and so we should be good to go here and we hit preview and no oh, we don't have a fraction so this is actually very common uh, when you're doing latex code sometimes if you type it in manually you forget something and you can see we've got a random numbers here but we don't have a fraction and upon closer look we have the tick mark here but I forgot to put it there to close the latex code off and so now if we take a look at this we have a question determine an equivalent fraction to eight fifths and if a different uh, student uh, opened up the desmos activity they would get a different fraction and we've got our unique questions generated for every student so that's as uh, hard as it has to be uh, certainly as the questions become more complex the code becomes a little bit more complex but hopefully i've put enough notes in the samples so that you can create your own questions using these templates.